Hi, hey, welcome to Dr. Bill's channel and this video is going to be in English for the sole purpose that it should reach every data aspirant out there and I don't want anyone to turn back because it's not in a language that they understand. So talking about my knee journey, it has ended with me getting a 511 score despite me getting way better in my mock test, like around 660s uh, was my highest and um, around 555 was my uh, lower or average range. And uh, the last exam, as in the main exam, I've just gotten a 511 and these are the 10 reasons why I don't think I got that marks or my highest marks in my actual exam. So the first major point that you should um, realize is your three hours and your exam hall three hours are completely different things. So when you practice your GTs, make sure that you're doing it within a span of two hours because anything more than that will cause a huge problem when you're actually writing an exam. So uh, from all the interviews I've heard from toppers, they've all like insisted on completing the papers within two hours. Though they've not clearly pointed it out, I've personally um, made it a point that I completed my papers within two and a half hours, but it didn't help me. You must learn to complete your papers within two hours. Um, even toppers have said that they complete their papers within one and a half hours and that's the ideal time. But I think two hours would also do the job because I wasn't able to like do a lot of questions because I practice with two and a half hours. Um, so if people who've practiced with three hours, they're like in more problem, they're in much more problem for now. So if you're at that stage where you're preparing for need for the next year, like 2024 years later, I would recommend you complete your GTs within two hours. The second thing is how people tend to write GTs every day, and it's not really a wrong practice, it's great for people who've done their major studying but if you're still studying a lot i think i would not recommend you do gts i was like this conventional neat aspirant who did her gts every day it doesn't really help a lot it helps people who just need more practice but not the people but not with the people who have no idea about what they're doing so firstly if you had your chinese exam in maybe a week or so would you be doing questions or like rather test papers or will you be rather studying? You would definitely be studying more rather than attending questions. So know your stand and do your GTs accordingly. Understand your stand and don't do papers every single day. So if you're doing any um, question paper or if you're doing two, three question papers every day, where is the time for you to analyze? So the main purpose of you doing GTs is analyzing your mistakes and there's no point of continuously doing GTs. If I'm doing one GT every day, where is the time for me to analyze it? How can I complete the topics? So for instance, in one GT or one grand test, there's um, around 20 questions I have which I didn't understand. So I should take that time to understand those topics rather than understanding that sole question alone. So for instance, if there's a question about RNA interference, I would rather study RNA interference, do more questions on that rather than just like, okay, more GT, more GT, more GT. It, that's, not the, that's not the ideal case of doing it or the ideal way of doing it. The third mistake all of us do, despite studying to be in the healthcare sector, we spoil our own health. Like, how can you become a doctor and say, please do sleep for seven hours? That's all that matters. Like, if you yourself is not ready to sleep for seven hours and you're just saying that seven hours or eight hours of sleep is overrated. So it's like, if you don't sleep for that seven, eight hours, whatever you're studying is literally not going here. It's just like, it's just evaporating. It's just becoming super volatile. So make sure that you're sleeping for seven to eight hours a day. Like, me, many people will be like, six hours is enough. Six hours is not enough. Like, how can you do it for a year? Or like nine months or ten months or whatever is the duration of your uh, preparation that will there, there are definitely going to be people who are going to do it in their early years right like 11th and 12th so it's highly not recommendable that you sleep for six hours what are you going to do with the rest of the time sleep for seven or eight hours prioritize your health because that is going to be the only thing that's going to help you win at the end Mistake number four is doing your error notes way early. So for me personally, I've done like around 30 grand, uh, 30 mock tests even before the grant is started, which means that I have written error notes for each of them. So each of the mock tests I've attended, I've written error notes, which are just, which was just like simply laying around. So there's no, there's absolutely no purpose of you writing error notes super early on. You just have to understand concepts early on, um, attend classes properly and understand each and every point that's given in your textbook because if you understand something at this point like you will remember physics and chemistry but you will not remember bio at the end so what's the point of you spending time initially into bio right but that's not how you should plan your preparation so when you plan your preparation make sure that um, you're not investing time into something that's not going to help you in the later phases of your preparation Mistake number five is to revise as many times. Most of us don't even like think to look back. So if for instance, you learn something new, okay? And we don't even look back. If there's something taught in class, you have to do it once when you come home or when you go into your hostels. 
make sure you're doing that and revise it once again even before you sleep so i would say that for me personally if i have to learn something i have to revise it four times in order to get it into my mind and never remove it out so revise everything correctly the sixth mistake is how we don't plan our studying correctly like what do i mean by it's not correctly planned you know in in the initial stages people will be like if i like study too much now i'm just going to be like tired towards the end and i'm not going to study well in the last phases and the most important phases of my exam preparation but that's not true because if you are ready to spend 12 hours in the early times i think it should definitely help you in the later phases right so it's just like climbing a staircase so it's not like one day you can just like pull up the river and just go to that point so you should make sure that you are planning everything accordingly so it's going to help you at the end so if for instance you're going to study something in bio and it's like all um, names and all the things that's very difficult for you to memorize make sure that you keep mnemonics to it until and unless you add mnemonics to whatever you're studying it's not going to stay in your mind at least in my mind it didn't stay and for most of the people i know it doesn't stay and everyone towards the end told me that oh my god whatever i studied in the starting was an absolute waste it's nothing is contributing to my exams right now so that's very important whatever you study initially has to be retained so study it like those things matter and make sure you're constantly revising what you're studying even if you study five pages make sure that you don't have to come back to it ever again you know in the later or the last stages of your preparation the seventh mistake is how people read ncert for physics don't do it please don't do it um if you want to read ncert do that for bio it's compulsory for bio and also chemistry do your ncert book backs it's very important for physics just do your ncert examples don't touch ncert physics please don't do that ever again because i was personally that person who would invest my time doing ncert physics like i would read ncert that's not recommended that's not recommended don't do ncert physics like don't read Uh, what i would say is that you would just uh, you could just go through the example questions change the values do that and to revise formulas um, just change um, or just add values and then just try out few sums with that so the eighth and the last point i'm just going to end the video with this because this is something that i've struggled a lot with you know you have to enjoy whatever you do and if you're studying do enjoy that because once you start enjoying so you know there's this one time where we would have understood one subject very well or one chapter very well and all of a sudden the classes become super interesting and all that right so the minute you start enjoying life things everything around you becomes so much better so just start enjoying that and uh, hopefully this video has helped people change their perspective of how they should be preparing for neat exam i really wish someone would have told me how to prepare for neat exam when i was writing it so i think this was a really helpful video i don't i don't think it's a bad video um i hope it helped people and uh, if it didn't i'm very sorry but these are just my experiences and i think it should definitely help a lot of people and that's why i'm making it in uh, english because i want everyone to be able to approach this video and if any doubts please do ask me in the comment section i'm i'm like super free right now so i can reply to everything so and also mail me uh, for any further queries so that's it hopefully may the most deserved uh, win this neat exam race for the next year so thank you and bye bye